Yo, man, and we are back with another video, man. This right here is what did the internet do to Undertale, okay? Is Undertale like a dog with an Undertale, or we gonna get straight into this video? Undertale is a tiny, tiny game released okay. on the 15th of September so 2015 and started life as a $5,000 Kickstarter. And it's here you can see its creator Toby Fox's bewilderment as the budget soars to 10 times his initial ask, uh, oh, as well okay. as little updates like Fox having to take time away from development to sit his college exams. And what I find interesting about these posts is you can see in them a person who had no idea Bet, man. Hey, y'all let me know. Have you played Undertale? Let me know right now in the comment section, man. Let's get back into it, though. Let's go. Idea what he was making or what it would become. And okay. How could he? Five years later, Undertale has become one of the most massive and bewildering forces on the Ooh. internet. Look at Seriously, that thing with, I've done with all that two teeth. videos like this and exploring those fandoms, it felt like digging through a mine, but Undertale's was more like staring into a massive yawning abyss, infinite and ever expanding. And okay. what I want to do today is look at how that happened, how the internet took this tiny okay. little game and transformed it into one of the most loved and hated phenomenon online. So this is like an Alex and to Bell do this, type video. We okay. need to start with Undertale itself. So this is a theory I'm type video. I'm guessing a lot of you know the deal with Undertale. You play as Frisk, a small child who has fallen into an underground kingdom of monsters, and from here you can treat them like you would in any other RPG and murder them, or become their friend. It's a cute idea, but in isolation, it wasn't that new or interesting in 2015. Okay. Games like Moon having very similar concepts, but releasing 18 years earlier, with non-lethal runs in games being popular by this time. So why then is the simple choice of Undertale's battles a big deal? And I think there's two answers to that. The first being its characters. Undertale has Bro, why great me Ninja characters, and how much you agree with that is going to define oh, how you thick. feel about this game. Take a character like Undyne. Initially, she just seems like a human murdering machine, but spend time with her and you'll see that her more homicidal tendencies are just an expression of her loyalty to Asgore. That's how much her friendships mean to her. Whether it's knowing Papyrus isn't suited to combat and teaching him to cook instead, or appreciating Alphys's pathetic love of anime. Okay. She's someone who's able to see people for what they are, rather than what they wish they were, and is able to love mm. them for those reasons. And learning all this about a I love that! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See me for who I am, you know what I'm saying? But that's an ugly character, though. Would y'all date them? Y'all let me know in the comment section, though. I mean, is she really, you know, she don't look that bad. She kind of remind me of Rihanna, though. No cap. Let's go, though, man. Character who first seemed like a standard RPG boss is really endearing. But that same discovery exists for each major character of Undertale. Whether it's Alfie's self-deprecating humor, hiding an intense layer of guilt and self-loathing, Flowey's hateful, pathetic existence, or Whoa. Metaton's journey to transition into a body they can be themselves in. Despite the fact that a single playthrough of Undertale takes about six hours, you get a oh, lot okay. of these characters, and I think a reason for that is how subtly their day. personalities are communicated. Each character has a home that you can explore, full of all these little touches, like Papyrus' okay. race car bed. This is like Pokemon, note, then. I really like the Mirror and Toriel's home that just says, It's you. <laughs> What a cute little joke, and certainly not a prelude to any massive emotional. As well as each character having their own highly expressive theme hey, music. I like, that. like, take Asgore, the king of the monsters waiting for you at the end of the game, who you are constantly told is this super nice guy, but who has also murdered six human children, Dang. your soul being the seventh and final one he needs. Oh my, no, no, you are savage, my guy. You are savage. Ain't no way, bruh. Six and he needs you. Why he needs you for? Why does he need you for, huh? What is this dude doing, man? This dude is worse than P. Diddy. Okay, Aaron R. Kelly put together, bro. This is crazy, man. 
needs to break the barrier trapping okay. his people underground. And his theme music, the reluctant but frantic Bergentrucken, captures that. It is the sound of a good person trying to convince himself to do something awful for what he believes is the greater good. And that okay. same level of expression can be found everywhere in the underground, even in a lot of the really tiny little side characters. Okay. From Burger Pants, the nihilistic, vaguely unhinged fast food worker, to Muffet the Spider, who well, is about as adorable as you could make one of those abominable hell creatures, to Naps to Blue, the depressed ghost, who at one point asks you to lie on the ground with him and listen to trance music, and oh my god, I don't know that I've ever related Whoa. to a fictional character oh, this yeah, much. And it all comes together to create this world of memorable little creatures who have been forced underground by humans, yet okay. have still managed to scrape together happiness in that. But there's this undercurrent of longing for something more, a desire to- Y'all just kind of giving me like Us vibes because I didn't even see the movie, but like Us, it was like the real person on top and then at the bottom it was trying to escape underground. I don't know if y'all seen Us, but Loki is giving me that vibe. I don't know if I'm just reaching- for a better life under an open sky. And it's sad. But it's that contrast that gives the world of Undertale its beauty. The reason I make a big deal about this is if you don't care about these characters, if you don't believe in this world, then the choices oh offered God. by Undertale's battle system, they don't mean anything. But if you do, that's where the option to kill or spare these monsters starts to carry real emotional weight. But it would still all be for nothing if the game didn't react to your decisions in a meaningful way. And Undertale is extremely reactive to the player's actions, even in some really tiny idiosyncratic okay. ways. Like Sans being able to tell that you've reloaded your save file and are experiencing the same sequence again. But where this becomes a big deal is how Undertale reacts to your actions to shape the larger story. If you go through the entire game without killing a single monster, you'll go down the pacifist route, which okay. means zero level ups or stat increases and it's difficult but it's the only way to experience the full story of Azriel, Asgore and Toriel's son, killed by humans and now transformed into the evil emotionless flower Whoa. that tried to take your soul at the beginning That's of the, the game. For Mario. The final battle with him seeing you and all the monsters you've spared facing Azriel and making him see through pacifism that he still matters. He is still loved despite the terrible things he's done and all the hatred nah, he feels until kids. finally Azriel no. loses the will to fight and in one okay. final act of repentance shatters the barrier sealing the monsters underground freeing them to pursue a new life on the surface Aww. at the end of it there's just a feeling that you did this you okay. show these creatures a real kindness not through any binary decision but by consistently doing what you Bruh, I ain't sparing no ops I ain't sparing no ops man we going straight in there bro I'm not sparing no ops no cap man we ain't going the neutral way because if y'all gonna help me y'all gonna help me at the end but I don't think y'all dare to help me Okay, I do not think y'all there to help me, man. Y'all look too evil to do that. You believe was right over what was easy. And the result is a ending that feels meaningful and responsive okay. to your actions. A genuine statement of the power of love over violence. And who you fuck, kissing? I think that's kind of beautiful. Who you kissing? But it's also here that things get really interesting. Oh. Go back to the title screen and you'll be met by Flowey, who warns you that there is one final threat to this world. You. Mm. You have given these characters the best possible life and now okay. you have the option to just walk away and let them be happy or you could reset the game and start again ripping them from their ideal future. And what's Dang. interesting is he's not talking to Frisk the character, he's talking to you, the player. So oh. why would you do this? Simple. Why do you do anything in any video game to see what happens? happens. And specifically, what happens if you kill 
every single monster in the underground. Oh. This is what takes you down the no mercy route, okay. or genocide as it's come to be known online. Uh, I'm gonna call it no mercy from here, because yeah. otherwise YouTube might think that this yeah. is a very don't, different kind of video than it is. Word, no bro. mercy rooms <laughs> are grueling. You have to walk back you, and forth through each area, killing every single Ooh, monster, and it can take hours. Route. But it's like the entire time the game is asking you, is this really what you want? And as you okay. do, the underground transforms Christmas. into this haunting, empty place as the monsters flee from you, abandoning their homes and even leaving notes begging you not to hurt their, their family. family. It feels cruel, like you are some terrible, violent force in this world, the major encounters of the game changing to reflect that, and none more so than your battle with Undyne, who before the battle is mortally wounded trying to save a child from you, and just listen to the dialogue here. Okay. Deep, deep in my soul, there's a burning feeling I can't describe. A burning feeling that okay. won't let you me didn't catch die. STD, This isn't did about you? monsters anymore, is it? If you get past me, you'll, you'll destroy them all, won't you? Monsters, humans, everyone. Everyone's hopes, everyone's dreams. Vanquished in an instant. Right now, everyone in the world i can feel their hearts beating as, as one. one and we all have one goal to defeat you human no whatever you are for the sake of the whole world i undyne will strike you down okay I love how this speech plants you as a villain about to battle the true hero of this story. But what's really interesting is that line, human, no, whatever you are. Because yeah. you're not human. Not yeah, you're killing world. everybody. Oh, okay. Humans cannot control time. Humans cannot come back from the dead over and over and over. Okay. You are not human. You're so what a being are you doing? that exists outside this fictional reality. You are a person playing a video game. And that gives you massive okay. power over I'm this still world a human, though, ain't I? and every character in it. Illustrated by the battle that follows. Undyne okay. is now dramatically more powerful and difficult than anything you've faced before. But for as grueling as this fight is... It's not a fair one, because each time you die, you can just reset, respawning at the last save point, and with each new attempt, your muscle memory strengthens as you learn the patterns of her attacks, rendering okay. them useless. You are growing, she is not. She can defeat you an infinite number of times and it doesn't matter, you just need to kill her once and it's over. You are not two equals engaging in a fair contest. You are an actual person in the real world, using every advantage you have to defeat a fictional video game character. Mm -hmm. And this fight shows the inherent unfairness of Ooh, that. And this, this is isn't good. the only moment the game acknowledges this. Remember the moment where Sans knows you've reset your save file? This happens because each time you reload a save, that is canonical. It is the player manipulating the timeline of this world. Mm. Something that becomes even more apparent when later in a No Mercy run, Flowey tells you that he used to have the same power that you do. He used to have the ability to reset the timeline of this world. How he used it to do everything. He saved everyone. He killed everyone. Oh, oh man. So you going on a path of a man and adventurer. That's what it seemed like the vibe is, you know what I'm saying? So Flower used to be a human or whatever they name is. They used to be a human. Is that what you're saying? Hey, this crazy. Over and over until the people of this world to him became nothing but sets of numbers and lines of dialogue like characters in a video game. And that power is what made Flowey so pathetic and cruel. But at this point, you're the same as he is. You've okay. destroyed the lives of creatures much weaker than you are just to see what happens. Bam. And that realization is chilling. 
But this is the strength of Undertale. It presents you with a choice through its battles, gives that choice meaning through its world and characters, and consequence in how the game reacts to your decisions. Damn. And it uses that to reach out beyond the screen and form a real connection with you, the mm. person holding the controller, and okay. makes a direct statement on how you choose to engage with the lives of beings in an inherently weaker position than you are. Are. And at its best, that's a powerful personal experience, and why I think people react to this game the way they do. And oh okay. boy, do people react. The reason I spend so much time talking about the appeal of Undertale is that whether you love it or don't, it's important to understand that this is a game that elicits a lot of emotion in people. But this created a problem. Undertale was still a small indie game. You could see the majority of its meaningful content in less than 20 hours, and from there, all that emotion had nowhere left to go. Take a character like Azriel. Go back to the beginning of the game after a pacifist run, and there he is, tending to the flowers. He will not go with you, and you cannot save him. Dang. He's resigned to stay alone in the ruins forever, slowly reverting back to the soulless version of himself. Mm. That's it. That's the end of this character. And this is where Dreamer Reborn comes in, a fan comic that reimagines this scenario, where now Frisk shares their soul with Azriel, allowing him to join his family on the surface and start a new life. And if you okay. want to know how hungry people were for that this kind of content, scene, Dreamer right? Reborn was uploaded just eight days after Undertale's release. Dreamer Reborn went on to be massively popular, even resulting in its own fan game, and was a critical moment for what Undertale would become online, because it told fans, if you wanted more Undertale, you could create it yourself. This opened the door to a whole world of new fan what? content. Say you are super into a character like Alphys, who maybe has 20 to 30 minutes dialogue across the entire game total. Well, through Bro, fan content. Some of these characters look like they could be on Simpsons or something. The Simpsons, y'all tell me they can't. She became infinite. Now you could watch her take cooking lessons with Undyne. You could explore the horror of her failed experiments. You could watch her get married try on outfits, oh, play video okay. games. Hell, you could even argue with her about anime in one of the many Undertale ask vlogs. <laughs> People even creating elaborate animations like this short showing Alfie's sinking into despair over the atrocities she's committed and how her first meeting with Undyne oh, began to change them. It's beautiful, but the thing is, this kind of fan content was now being made for every major character of the game, a sign of just how quickly Undertale was spreading online. Okay. Through nothing more than fan passion, the game became a massively popular topic for video essays that would scrape at every tiny corner of the game, desperate to uncover new information for an increasingly ravenous fan base. The game even reached some of the most popular creators on the internet Dang, okay. who would stream and let's play this niche indie RPG to audiences of millions, Beauty leading box. to massive influxes of new fans. This dude and if you want to see the most explosive expression of that new popularity, oh, they got a you can find it in the Undertale battle animations. No matter how dramatic the showdowns in Undertale felt, visually they were nearly always very simple, and had to be in order to remain feasible for its tiny developments. And what these fan animations did was free the most dramatic moments of Undertale's story from those limitations. Okay. Letting us experience the sheer lunacy of the hey, ratings driven war with Metaton, lit, the violent, desperate cruelty of a no mercy I gotta root go back Undyne, or the sheer tragic beauty of a pacifist root Azriel, like the fucking stunning Telly LZ's hopes and dreams, capturing all the that emotion, like tragedy, doing. and tenderness of the showdown with the god of hyperdeath. And I think that's what drives a lot of the artists behind these creations, a desire to recreate how these fights felt. And I'm guessing that's why the most popular by far is the battle with Sans. 
Coming right at the end of a No Mercy run, this is where the game finally pushes back against the player. Sans, having watched you repeatedly destroy the lives of everyone he loves, okay. now faces you in one final terrible fight. Okay. And it is a nightmare. Sans even taking control of the timeline and forcing the player to be the victim of saves and resets. And what these Dang. animations do is capture all that violence, Bro, all that emotion, and express it in a way that was never possible in the original game. The crazy part isn't even how many of these animations Sans there are or their the sheer old. quality, but their insane popularity. Okay. I want you to take a look at this animation Minecraft on screen animation? Now, and I want you to try and guess how many views you think this has. Okay, hold that number. Did you guess as high as 4 million views? Okay. Well, if you did, you drastically underestimated because it's actually 60 million, million views. views. And this is not an anomaly with Undertale fan animations. 22 million views, 66 million views, 95 million, million views. views. I would wager that with view counts this high, these animations were likely how a lot of people actually discovered Undertale, meaning at a point the Undertale Dang, fandom became self-perpetuating, fan works creating new fans who would in turn create new fan works, and you could see this new level of popularity being expressed in some really insane ways, an entire music scene built up around Undertale NXT. fan remixes, <laughs> people were programming their own Undertale fan games, Kenny Omega even main evented Wrestle Kingdom 13 to Undertale <laughs> entrance I told music! You, NXT. Oh God, this is a big deal. Oh, 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 and within it, the fandom itself, every tiny corner of the game was now being mined for fan content. Oh, you remember yeah. those little side characters we mentioned earlier? Each of them now had That's their like own that massive Cage fan movie. following. Each so tiny strand of Undertale was okay. being filtered through a thousand different lenses, resulting in legions of fan art, fan comics, fan fiction, like plushes, letters. stage productions, live action films, cooking videos, body pillows, porn, <laughs> which yes, I oh, am going to talk whoa. about, because I refuse to be Not silenced on this platform. Bruh. Yeah, you need to cut Adulting there, bro. in a profound <laughs> sexual awakening, the likes of which I never bro, thought make I a skeleton My point That's here crazy. is that from the little carrier bird and waterfall to the bench okay. quiche, each tiny strand of Undertale was being magnified a thousandfold and given new life online. And if you want to see how minute this gets, look no further than W.D. Gaster. If a fictional character could win an award for appearing in a piece of media the least, but inspiring the most fan content, Gaster would win that award. His existence is only suggested in a mm. handful of easily missable moments throughout the game. The royal scientist before Alfie's, your odds of actually encountering him are tiny, dependent on a randomly assigned number at the start of your game from 1 to 100. And if that number oh. happens to be 66, a mysterious Yikes, grey room appears 10% of the time, which 66. may contain a character sprite commonly believed to be Gaster. Meaning okay. he only appears in roughly one out of 1,000 playthroughs. So and yet he is a massively popular character in the fandom. Appearing in innumerable fan comics, fan fiction, a fully playable boss battle, as well as fan animations, the most popular of which has 45 million views. He's barely in the fucking game! And if it's <laughs> starting to make sense why I call Undertale's fandom an abyss, Oh, buddy. Bruh. We're just that character started. looked the most coolest, though. On October 17th, 2015, Tumblr user Underfella uploaded a drawing of Toriel. But rather than the kindly goat mother you encounter at the start of the game, mm -hmm. this was a creepy distortion of that Ooh, character. Yeah, they got horns. And something about it resonated with people. So much so that Underfella began to reimagine each character of Undertale in this more sinister light. Dang. These images running rampant throughout fan communities Bruh. with people now yeah, creating Undertale their own fan works of this fan work. 
creating a collective online world of thousands of people envisioning what this new darker reality of Undertale Middle would Steger? be like. And this Who was the birth off? of Underfell. Underfell. One of the first massively popular Undertale alternate Bro, I'm not universes playing this game. for eight no years. Ways. I have legit seen full-blown AAA games with lesser followings than Underfell, to the point that it's difficult for me to even convey how massive it mm. is. So I'm going to be using a very specific example. This is what happens when I type Underfell Remix, Remix. into YouTube. And just look at all the results. These are all soundtracks for a game that does not exist. exist. Except it kind of does. There are multiple fully developed Underfell fan games, along with all the other weird shit you'd expect from any property with a massive a fan Marshall's following. It. All this dark, edgy shit. I love it, but I think the appeal is deeper than that. Yes. Undertale was at a point where every tiny part of it had been memefied a thousand times over, and so the only option left was to break these characters free from that canonical limitation. And so, like a remix of a song you love, Underfell let fans re-experience them all okay. over again, and in doing so, making them personal, specific, and limitless. Oh, and if you're wondering mm. why I referred to Underfell as one of the big Undertale AUs, well... Underswap came into existence when a piece of fan art from Tumblr user Popcorn Prince swapped the personalities kind of, of Sans name, oh, and Papyrus. Prince, Sans knew the overenthusiastic human hunting goof you and Papyrus the friend? laid back older brother who knows more than he should. Okay. Just like Underfell, the idea picked up a massive amount of momentum among the Undertale fan community, with Popcorn Prince creating similar swapped personas for each character in Undertale. Undyne became the royal scientist, Alfie's the head of the guard, you get the okay. idea. However, whereas Underfell imagines a dangerous, more violent Island Undertale, Under Swap is kind of the opposite, okay. often depicted as a softer, more peaceful reality oh, that tends okay. to focus more on slice Good of life style bad. stories. And like Underfell, it is huge. A DeviantArt Under Swap search yields 37,000 results. <laughs> that same remix test from earlier, that works for Under Swap Underswap too. There is a under massive community fail. still producing content to, to this day. And it's just crazy to me that there could be two massive popular Undertale AU. Horror Tale began life as a DeviantArt webcomic that reimagined the world and characters of Undertale as horrific nightmare versions of themselves. What? Went on to gain a massive fan following with fan games, fan art, and a hugely popular creepy version of Sans with his head cracked open. Dust Tale is a Korean Ask blog in which Sans emotionally destroys Bro, how from many do they got? genocide runs, murders the monsters of the undergrounds to level himself up to finally take down the human and end the infinite looping genocide. It also has a massive fan following with a hugely popular version of Sans. It's kind of like Undertale crazy. crossed with Brazil. Dang. Outer Tale is an Undertale AU set in space. It Outer also tale. has a massively popular fan following. Oh, okay. That's the last Undertale AU. Ah! Fell Swap is an Underfell Underswap combination alternate universe set during the 20th century Cold War in which the characters of Underfell swap personalities as they do in Underswap. Not to be confused with Swap Bruh, Fell, which is a different thing where the characters of Underswap become Fellified versions this, my of guy? their swapped selves, and technically what? this version of Fell Swap is Fell Swap Gold, which is a different thing from Fell Swap Red or Fell Swap Emerald. And this, this is the point where my mind How started to versions? break, and I started to feel like Yo. there was no bottom to this community. There said, are bro. hundreds of Undertale AUs, and many with their own massively popular fan communities. I have been researching this stuff for weeks, and I have no mm. idea what the fuck disbelief papyrus is. <laughs> How does this video have 20 million views? Dude, A lot of these universes Papyrus? even have different pacifist, neutral, and genocide timelines. I googled genocide underswap papyrus just to see if that was a thing, and not only is it, oh. someone had done a full genocide underswap papyrus what? boss battle twice! Bro, yeah, y'all wicked for this. Who did this, bro? Y'all wicked in the mind, my like, guy. Take 
Fresh Sans. Another massively popular Sans AU character, but then one day someone was like, what if Fresh Sans existed in Underfell, leading to Unfresh Sans? Which in turn oh, led to someone sense. being like, what if Unfresh Sans so was a person drew, leading to drew. human Unfresh Sans? This is a fan character of a fan character of I'm a fan character, character of an original creation. At some point, these fan characters even got really weird and meta, like Error Sans, who I actually think is pretty rad, who travels from alternate universe to alternate universe, wiping out different Undertale mm. AUs, whose counterpart is Ink Sans, who helps and encourages fan this creators in crazy. making their own <laughs> Undertale universes. These are are also both massively popular fan characters with their own communities. And if you want to get really insane, what if everything we just talked about, what if it all existed in one massive meta universe? Ooh. Underverse is a multi hour long animated web series that combines all the different Undertale AUs into one gargantuan meta storyline, featuring popular fandom characters like Core Frisk, Underswap Papyrus, Ink Sans, Error Sans, Fresh Sans, Fell Sans, Nightmare, Dream, Cross Sans. That last one being the these. Sans of the Crossverse, the prequel series to Underverse that focuses on the story of Frisk and Kara, two brothers who have to watch their own universe repeatedly reset by Cross Gaster as he tries over and over to recreate his own Undertale AU. This is an alternate universe about making alternate universes Universe. and you want to know the absolutely <laughs> fucking crazy part it's good the art style I is beautiful is. the character designs are really sharp and expressive look at how cute Alvi's looks in her dress how fucking badass undyne looks in her suit muffet's in the royal guard and and it's it's class but I think the really genius thing about this series is that just as Undertale acknowledges it is a video game and uses that to tell its story, Crossverse acknowledges it is a piece of fan fiction and does the same. Okay. It tries to imagine what it would be like for these characters existing in AUs, trapped in universes where at any moment your timeline could be reset, Frisk and Kara mm. being the only ones to retain memories of their previous timelines, having to repeatedly watch their family, friends and lives, all of it pulled back to zero and starting again, Dang. with the character writing <laughs> strong enough to support that concept. And yeah, look, it is insane. You have to know an obscene amount about Undertale and its different AUs to just understand what's happening. But if you can get past all the weird abstract lore and world building, it's actually really good. Oh my God. I am a Kingdom Hearts fan. I have become everything I once hated. Oh well. And yet as obtuse and inaccessible Hold as up, this series- Hold on, where did that come at, man? I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. That was so random, bro. Is, is, that is a barrier that millions of people have crossed. Underverse spawning okay. its own fan art, parodies, analysis videos, and it isn't even the most popular multi-hour long Undertale AU animation on YouTube. That would be the shockingly well animated battle heavy glitch tale. The remake of the first I episode think I heard a glitch having tale. 20 million views. Dang. After you start this we stuff go back long and watch enough, some of these episodes. really weird starts to happen. You start to view the original Undertale as just one small part of everything Undertale has become online. And I have to wonder, what is that like for Toby Fox? I've done two videos on gigantic online fandoms, but the mm. difference is that Should one was these? a massive multi-million Bro, dollar IP to designed videos. to disrupt the lie. global games industry, well, and the video. other was a primetime TV show created the by Simpsons. a multi-billion dollar corporation. Undertale was a $5,000 Kickstarter right. from a $5, guy who liked Earthbound. And imagine, all that attention on just you. And it was not all positive. Undertale fans were now everywhere, flooding every message board and social media feed. 
and they were going to make themselves heard. Just two months after Undertale's release, it was voted the best game of all time in a 2015 GameFAQs poll, beating out many of. titles that had for years defined what games were. And this was the beginning of a massive Undertale backlash sucks. from the wider <laughs> gaming audience, with Undertale cringe compilations and other videos ridiculing the game and the people who loved it. And not helping were the reports of bullying and harassment from within oh the God. fandom itself. You go ahead, YouTuber Adam. Markiplier infamously cancelling his Let's Play after just two episodes. So negative was Dang. the backlash to Markiplier his no mercy with other oh, bizarre incidents that like right, one that took place at a Taiwanese convention in which a popular fan artist was injured after she was given a cookie with a needle baked into it. You're gonna find what? stories like this from any community Bruh, that that's goes crazy. large enough, I don't but know. this was the level that this niche indie RPG had now reached. And if you want an idea of how intense that might have been, both the creators of Underfell and Underswap deleted their original blogs. And just imagine, imagine what it's like when even the people making things from the thing you made are unable to withstand that massive online feedback. In the years that follow, Fox would become notoriously shy to interviews and public appearances, speaking about his experience in his blog post, Retrospective on Undertale's popularity. Not only did I not expect this level of popularity, but initially, I was afraid of it. I even tried to contact certain Let's Players to tell them not to make any, any content, content about, about it. it. Like a thunderclap to a small dog, all this attention stressed me out. I, I wished I had a way to did. quell the attention. I felt a strange powerlessness. But the line that really chills me from Fox is when he gave in a 2017 interview with Edge magazine, where he stated, my life has changed permanently, permanently and will never change back. Dang. And I gotta say, I get that. Bro, I don't know what you want. <laughs> Undertale Reset. is a teeny tiny little game that released on the 15th of September oh, 2015. Oh, you smart for that, man. And at the time, I was making my first YouTube video. That's right. This whole video has just been a prelude for me to get weird and personal and you're too far in to stop watching now. I've been thinking about that time a lot lately. See, I've been doing this for five years and somehow in that time, and I just what to found me out has about always been channel? this small oh, we personal to go back YouTube and watch channel channels. I mean, has watch grown to videos, nearly bro. one oh, million you know subscribers. Cow. Which is something I find equally exciting and horrifying. I love you guys, I really do, but you also terrify me. I love this job, but it changes it? you. The success of this channel to that of Undertale's, there is no comparison, and I know this isn't related to you, and that is fucking beautiful. Undertale is a game that creates a lot of emotion. And all the internet did was give that emotion a conduit, letting it spread across countless fan art, let's plays, twitch streams, and innumerable other pieces of fan media. And Undertale's still the same game it was five years ago. It's still a tiny indie RPG. It's just also one of the biggest games on the planet. The internet, social media, and fan culture have just evolved to the point that both those things can be true at the same time. A duality that even 10 years ago wouldn't have been possible. And that comes with a lot of weird stuff, but it also means people across the world get to experience things they never otherwise would have. And with Undertale, and hell, this too. I'm really glad that that happened. Bruh. <laughs> This was an insane video, dog. I ain't gonna lie, man. This was an insane video. To be honest, I didn't think I will react to the whole thing, but it was so good, man, that I was just on this, man. Undertale, how you got so many versions of it, the good, the bad, man. It was like a hundred different versions of it, man. And my guy 
started off with five thousand dollars to create this project man and look where it went but he he probably just overwhelmed by everything man on this and how you could reset the game you could you know go on different you know um if you wanted to you know what i'm saying kill everyone or you wanted to you know, you had a choice between it and the game. That's what I'm trying to say, man. This was a lot to take in in these 39 minutes, bro. I will have to go back and watch this video. I'm not one that's going to remember everybody's name in this video, okay? I'm just not. I'm just going to remember what, you know, he said, the just of everything. But if it's any videos you want him, I mean, <laughs> that you want me to react of him, let me know in the comment section. Share this video, man. Like this video, man. Um, if you did watch this full video, write down Superman in the comment section, man. Love you guys. It's the fat red guy, man. I'm signing out. You guys have a wonderful day.